Hey guys, welcome to this beautiful morning. I'm going to spend all day with you and share what I eat in the day, so let's go ahead and get started. So I've made it a habit to drink a full liter of water when I get up, and I'll make sure I finish that liter by the time I'm done getting ready in the morning. I just feel like it really helps to get me off to a good start getting rehydrated after sleeping all night. And then for a pre-workout meal, I'll make a smoothie, so I'm just going to add some ice to my Vitamix blender, a banana, and then medjool dates. I like these medjool dates from Costco. I've already pitted those, so I'll just use about four or five of them, and then some Big One nutritional powder. It's got protein, all kinds of vitamins, minerals, all based from whole plant foods. And then also some almond milk, and I'll just blend that up. I really like doing a nutritional shake or a spirulina shake in the morning before a workout because I don't really feel like breakfast first thing before working out, so usually I like to do something light and then I'll do breakfast afterwards. And for breakfast, I'm gonna make an acai bowl. This is one of my favorite ways to make acai bowl. So I use these Samazon Super Fruit Packs. I get these at Costco. So I'm gonna use two of these, so I'm gonna double up on it today. And then the coconut milk, so one can of coconut milk that's chilled. Um, usually I like to chill them at least overnight, but I almost always have cans of coconut milk in my fridge ready to go. And so you'll just scrape out that top layer, the really thick cream, the coconut cream, because you wanna get to the liquid part in the bottom. So there's the liquid. It's about a half cup is what I'm left with. That one had a lot of cream in it, but that's perfect. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that away in the fridge and that'll be perfect later on for like coconut whipped cream or something else. And then I'll go ahead and cut open the packs of the Samazon, the acai, and just add those to the blender. And then I'll add one banana. And this is a frozen banana. You can use fresh too if you want. And then I'll add the coconut milk. And so this is again about a half cup of coconut milk. You could use other types of milk too, but I really like the coconut milk because it makes it so rich and creamy. And so when you're blending this up, you want it to be super thick. So you really have to use that tamper to help, you know, get everything blended in there. But you want it really thick. So you don't want it too watery because it'll melt too fast and be too soggy in your acai bowl. You want it nice and thick and rich and creamy. And there it is. Look at that texture. Oh, that's going to be a good one. Most of the time I like to make homemade granola, but I just decided to use this pumpkin and flaxseed granola that we already had from Costco. And so I'll just add bananas and strawberries and blackberries, blueberries, kind of just whatever I have in the fridge that I want to eat up. And I'll add a little bit of granola on top and your beautiful acai bowl is ready to eat. Look at those berries. They were absolutely mouthwatering and with the creamy coconut acai. And for lunch today, we're making chili lime carnitas tacos with this jackfruit. It is freaking delicious. If you like lime, this is a tangy one. There's different types of jackfruit that you can use, but this one is very limey. You really got to like that lime. Uh, so we just heat it up. That's all you do. Throw it in the pan, heat it up. Super simple. And so there's the ingredients to give you an idea. You can use it on sandwich salads, over rice, tacos, stir fry, all kinds of things. And there's different brands making this seasoned jackfruit now to add into different dishes, but it's really awesome. Definitely give one a try. And so we're going to add a little bit of avocado oil to another pan just to heat up our shells, our tortilla shells. We also made some guacamole, and this is the sour cream we're using, vegan sour cream, of course. And then here are the jackfruit tacos. And when it comes to tacos, we like the works on there as far as toppings go. So we added olives and onions, tomatoes, you could do pico de gallo, cilantro. It is absolutely delicious. And then later on in the afternoon, I had a mini mono meal of kiwis. So I drink about three liters of water a day. The first liter as soon as I get up and then the other two liters I'll just drink all throughout the day. And sometimes I'll add like mint to my water or lemon. So right now I'm just adding some mint. So I'll just kind of muddle that mint a bit to drop it in there. And it just gives it, you know, some fun flavor. And water is definitely my go-to beverage of choice. If I can have anything to drink, if I'm at a restaurant or anything, I go for water. And then a little later on in the afternoon, we decided to make some coconut date rolls, and these are really delicious. So we used about a dozen dates, so we used the medjool dates, pit them, and then drop them into your uh, food processor. And then you can pulse it and just, uh, you know, blend those dates up a bit, and you're going to end up with like a little ball of date. And then Michael's using some parchment paper, but you can use any, you know, flat, kind of like non-stick surface to do this on. And so we're using this organic shredded coconut. It's unsweetened. And so we just grab that little date ball, put it on our flat surface, and then roll it around in the coconut. And you want that coconut to just kind of get, you know, worked into the date ball. And then once the coconut is worked in as much as you like to the date, then you can go ahead and start rolling it out. And you can do this in several pieces. We actually did a couple uh, different rolls of these. And so just keep rolling it out until it's about the diameter that you want. And then go ahead and just slice it into pieces. 
And then after you cut the pieces, dip the ends in the coconut. It'll kind of seal the ends and then do one final roll in the coconut and it just kind of keeps it, you know, easy to grab so they're not sticky. And they're actually really delicious. You can keep these in the fridge. I'm also going to have some tea this afternoon. So I'm having some double vanilla white tea from Xena's Gypsy Tea. And I'm going to have my coconut date rolls. And so these will last in your fridge for a long time so you can take them places with you for snacks and whatnot. And for dinner tonight, we're making vegan tamales, one of my favorites. So we're going to start off with our corn husks. We're going to be soaking our corn husks. We get these at a little Hispanic store and they have all kinds of really cool stuff in there. So we love going there. We get our masa there too. And so he's going to make about six tamales tonight, I think. And so he's just placing six corn husks in the water and he's taking one extra corn husk and he's going to tear little pieces off, just tear it into strips, which are going to be used to tie the ends of the tamales later on. And so he just brings the water to a simmer and then turns it off and then kind of presses those corn husks down into the water. And so you'll just let them soak for about an hour and then they'll be nice and soft and easy to work with. And here's the masa we're gonna be using. We usually get another kind, but they were sold out at the Hispanic store. And so we just got this one, but it seems to be fairly good as well. So we're gonna take two cups of masa and add that to our large mixing bowl. And then a pinch of sea salt. Michael does a little overboard with the sea salt, but that's okay, it's optional anyway. Um, one teaspoon of baking powder. And then he's going to use avocado oil for our oil. And so he uses a quarter cup of oil. And then you're going to use one and a half cups of warm water. And then get right in there with your hands and work all those ingredients together. And then Michael will kind of roll the masa around and kind of roll it into a ball and then set it aside and we'll get to work on the tamale filling. Your options are unlimited when it comes to making delicious vegan tamale filling. We're going to do a zucchini and vegan cheese filling. So Michael's adding some pieces of zucchini to our food processor. It's just going to chop that up really small so it's super fine. And then add it to a small mixing bowl and you can season it however you want. So Michael's going to add a pinch of sea salt and then some black pepper. And then mix it together and our husks should be just about done. So we're going to check them. Yes, they are soft and supple and ready to use. So we're going to take those out let them drain on a plate along with those little strips. And then one by one we take the husks and a little piece of masa and then roll the masa into a ball. Set it on the husk and I'm sure there must be maybe like tamale presses or maybe some people use rolling pins. I don't know. We just use a plate to press the masa down into uh, the, the husk. Um, so that just happens to work and that's what we already have available. So that's all we use. And then we just add our filling in so we're adding our seasoned zucchini and then some vegan cheese we use this daya pepper jack style and then we just kind of fold the tamale over so fold the masa over on itself inside there and then you can wrap that corn husk around the outside and then michael will twist the ends and then he uses the small strips of corn husk to tie the ends closed And now we have six tamales that are ready to be steamed and so our little steamer tray is in the pot and we'll just go ahead and set those in there. Michael likes to kind of tilt them upright and then let them steam for about 30 minutes and then they're done. And so now you can take them out, undo the corn husks, or you can let them cool first because they're pretty hot when they first come out. So let them cool off a little bit and then undo the corn husks and set those delicious tamales free. Now we have naked tamales here. We got to do some toppings on it because you know how I feel about doing the works on top of my Mexican food. So for toppings, we whipped up some fresh peas pico de gallo, guacamole, vegan sour cream, a little bit of cilantro, and it is going to be delicious. And the best part is it's 100% vegan. All right, guys, I'm going to let you go. I hope you liked the video. I love making food videos for you guys and sharing quick recipe ideas and quick meals. So I'm going to let you go and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.